All right, so now we officially start. Thanks everybody for showing up. And today we have Fabio Vasquez, who's gonna be presenting his case or his presentation about data science. And to give you guys a brief rundown on who we are as a company, we, our company is called Ideas. And we, this is co-hosted by another company called Data Application Lab. And for Ideas, we're a nonprofit organization and our goal or our mission is to just get everybody in the field of data. Doesn't and we're trying to transition to blockchain a little bit, but anything with data science, AI, big data, blockchain, we're just trying to get everybody together as a community, more close, and just to spread the awareness of what we can do with data. So for us, we host a lot of conferences and Right now we're branching out into online conferences now, which you guys are here right now, the webinars. So this is completely new. Um, our first, this is our second episode actually. So if you guys are new, we post our updated videos to our channel called Data Application Lab on YouTube. We also hold certificates, workshops, and we also do some consulting work. So if you're ever interested, you could check out our website, which I'll send you out later. And this is just a rough breakdown on how we evolved as a company. We just started February 2016, launched our first conference at USC, our so-called data science conference. And we just moved, we just moved up real quick. We just had our last conference, I think a few days ago at Harvard and MIT, it went really well. And again, um, as a company, we are connected with a lot of keynote speakers, a lot of data scientists and a lot of people in the industry. We provide a lot of sessions, training, and we just like to utilize our resources to just network. So take this opportunity to connect with us. And whenever there's opportunities of any sort, we love to provide resources to you guys. So these are some of our few speakers. We have hundreds throughout the year. And because of this, we're a social with many, many different companies. Um, if you're ever interested in partnering with us, with any, like anything you guys want, we have a sponsorship package. Feel free to email me or leave a message. And the demographics for us, this is pretty interesting. So 20% of our attendees are like scholars, 36% are young professionals, like breaking into the field, 22% are practitioners, and 14% is just um, other people. And here, these are our close sponsors and partnerships. We're very close with LinkedIn, NVIDIA, IBM, and also USC. That's where our main organization is located at. We're in the LA area. And two, we provide certificates, SQL training, R, Python, recommendation systems, and NLP. So here's the email. You could jot it down real quick. You have any questions, it could be any anything related to data science, questions on how to get into the field, or partnerships, feel free to um, message or email through here. And now I'm gonna start sharing this and I would like to pass the baton to Fabio. So thanks Fabio for showing up. I'm gonna uh, end my screen. All right, so <clears throat> thank you guys for being here. I'm gonna share my screen right now. Um, I'm gonna share everything here, share screen. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah. All right. So, what is this thing I call shaping the world with data science? I explained that in the, in the rest of the talk. Right now I can say that I just changed jobs I now um, I'm working for Racken and OXO. If you don't know what's OXO, um, it's the biggest commodity store here in Mexico. And they have a lot of different kind of, of uh, maybe stores, but the main one is, is it's called OXO and they sell, and they sell all of these goods for you like coffee and rice and I don't know, whatever. And it's, it's, it's really big here in Mexico. Right now, I'm working inside of IMA, 
or information management and, and, and analytics. I'm creating right now the data science team and I'm trying to do my best here to improve uh, the way this company works with data science. So <clears throat> why, what is this webinar gonna be about? In the first part, I'll be talking about what is data science. Is, I'm gonna give my definition of, of, of data science. And then I'm gonna say, or maybe discuss why is data science important? And how are we using data science for a better world, for improving the world? And how you can change the world with data science? Okay, so maybe you can just say, say what you think in the Q&A section, but I always ask this question. And, and for you, is data science a, a science? Why for you it's not, or why is a science for you? And maybe you can just post there uh, on the Q&A or, or chat. But my answer to this question is that data science is much linked to the business, but it's a science in the end, or it's in the process of becoming one, or maybe not. Um, but this is why I think it could be important for data science to become a fuel science. And um, when you have a full science there, um, the, that, that will mean that all the projects we are doing with data science should be reproducible. And that means that everyone else with the same data and code should be able to get the same answers. And that's really important for science too, because if I publish an article with my findings and I'm saying in the article, this is something I just found and anyone else will be able to find it in the future, that's really not useful for for humankind. And it's, it's important that, that we think if we're doing open source data science or we're doing this for the, this different kind of projects to improve the world, that everyone else out there should be able to reproduce what, you, what you're doing. Fallible, that means that it's not the actual final true of, of the world, that we're not discovering here the, the ultimate uh, truth of the world. And this is true for science too. Science is not in the look for, for the truth, it is in the look for knowledge. And we're not trying here to, to say, or, or you, you won't see in an article of in, in science or physics or, or whatever, someone saying, yeah, this is the final theory and this is it. Please stop investigating because I just found the, 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 the ultimate truth. And, and that's true for data science too, because we're not, we're, we're trying to improve or accuracy or improving the algorithms we're using, machine learning, deep learning, but it's, it's never gonna end. We're, we're not finding here the, the final answer to anything. We're improving and will be improving all the time. Collaborative, that means that data science and the a, a, a data scientists should exist in, in a team. It's not, uh, I mean, uh, we, we should work with a team of different kinds of people to solve business problems. And, and this is really important because right now we're seeing a lot of these big companies like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, open sourcing their, their, their own code. And, and this is for this purpose, to be able to improve collaboration across the world with, with their findings and getting more people involved in what they're doing. So think about that when, when you're trying to do data science in your company, that this is that you should be thinking that you are a team player. You're not an, a, a, a lone wolf there trying to change the world by yourself. And creative because science is really creative because we're trying to solve really difficult problems and not all the time, the, it, it, we have a clear answer to them or a, cl a clear path to solve it. So we should be creative, be able to find solutions out there that work for different kind of projects and apply it to ours. And finally, compliance to regulations, to, to, re to re regulations, sorry, because it, it will be more and more important in the future that uh, we will have more laws that will prevent anything we want with data and when you're entering a new company you should ask hey what can i do or, or what can i 
can I mean I do with it, and you should be uh, maybe you should be thinking that you should be you should be doing ethic stuff with the data you have, and when you're analyzing someone, I I always say this for you is just a data point, but inside of that data point is a whole story. Someone asking or maybe trying to be the best they they can. This is what, what I, I mean. I worked in a bank, and when we were trying to 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 say to someone that hey, you have your credit approved or denied, and this is not only a number. I mean, people are not are not just number, and they should not be for you. Uh, when there's people trying to do the best out there, so you have to make sure that you're doing your best to to get the good people the good things, and to shut down bad people out there. So with all of that I, I just talked about, um, I just created a definition of data science. I posted it on a blog maybe a month ago on Towards Data Science. And this is my, my, so my solution to this question. What is data science? Is there the resolution to business or organization problems? I say here organizations because it's not always business because the business one to, I mean, is for, for, for a profit. But organizations, maybe they can be like uh, academic stuff or people trying to end famine in the world. So it's, 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 it's really different here. And we're trying to, to solve these kind of problems through mathematics, programming, and the scientific method. And that will mean that you, you should create an, a, a hypothesis of what you will think will be an answer to the problem, create experiments that will be different kind of codes, and with different kind of platforms or tools, and then some tests, and through the and and through the analysis of data, you should generate a predictive model. And this is what we do with data science. And this is an important word here, and it, it should be a word, a, a a word that we all think about, and that's the word model. When we're doing science, we're not solving the reality of stuff. We're creating a model of what things look like. And this is what we do in data science. We make assumptions. And you should be aware of, that, of, of those assumptions in your models. When you're creating, um, when you're using frameworks that has some algorithms for data science, all of them have some assumptions on, on how the world should look like or, or, or how the data should look like because for data science, your, your, your field of study is actually data. And you have to make assumptions there and create a model of reality and then solve it with, with this process. Um, data science is also responsible for transforming these problems that the business or organization have into well-posed questions. And that means a thing that can be solved with data science. Not every question can be solved with data science. Not everything can be solved with data science, and not everything should be solved with data science. And we, we, we and when, when I say here well posed question, what I'm saying is a question that can be answered through the scientific method, creating an experiment, hypothesis, and test with data to then create a model. Okay, and this solution should also, should also respond to the initial hypothesis in a creative way. In the end of this process, data science must also include the effective communication of the results obtained and how the solution adds value to the business or organization. Uh, I mean, you're not doing anything if your solution just, is, is, just sits there in a, in a notebook or maybe in a .py or .r Maybe uh, that that's nothing for the business if you cannot effectively communicate the results and how that solution will add value to the to, to the business. So this is what we see all the time in, in, in the internet, or what people is trying to say data science is. It's not that far away from the truth, but I think uh, we're more than that. We're we're more than a Venn diagram, and this is what I created a a definition for myself of who's, who is a data scientist and it's really close to what is data, is, is, is data science. So for me, a data scientist is a person in, char in charge of analyzing these problems that business or organization have and give an structured solution. In the, in the words, a structured solution 
uh, you should be thinking about the scientific method and hypothesis and tests and all of this different stuff. Uh, starting by converting this problem into a valid question and a complete question. That, that should mean that you need an answer to the question. You need to create a question that can be answered and can be answered with data science. And then using programming, computational to, uh, tools, you should develop codes that prepare, clean, analyze the data we have to create models and then answer the, and then answer the initial question. So this is for me what I did as a scientist. Uh, I mean, and this is what I do all the time. Um, of, of course, there can be different variants to, to this definition. If you think something different, just please say in the Q&A and we will discuss it later. All right, so why are we here in this webinar? Why, why, um, I, why I define myself as a data scientist and why is data science important after all? So I think data science is important because it enables us to create intelligence through AI. And this is, and when I say AI here, I'm actually just talking about machine learning, deep learning, and all of these subfields that we have because we, we're not in the, in the point of artificial general intelligence. Um, but I, I, I think data science guides the companies and guides all, all of the world out there to create intelligent solutions through AI. Because AI by itself is a good area of research, but without a science and people working with the theories, it's just papers. So this, this is like the engineering of science. Uh, like when, when an engineer creates a building, that an architect just draw. For me, data science is doing that for, for AI. And also it exists because hidden in the data, there are treasures waiting to be discovered. And this is a, 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 a phrase that I like a lot, and is data is a new soil. And I think I've talked about this before and a lot of people too, but it's not, uh, there was a quote before that said data is a new oil, but it's not the same because oil by, by itself has value. You can just sell, I mean, if you are out there and you find oil, you can just sell it. But with data, it's not the same because data should be worked and we should get out there and get our hands dirty to analyze the and, and find these hidden treasures in the data. So this is what, with what data science is, is doing all the time. Trying to find this data, work a lot there, clean it, prepare it, analyze it, and then create pretty models with it. All right, so I'm gonna go through here uh, to different projects and organizations uh, making the world better with data science. <clears throat> and I wanted to talk about this because maybe it's not that they're not that famous, as Google creating in a, a, I know, an autonomous car or, or someone else creating just a robot for, for just picking up stuff. That's okay too, that's, that's really cool. And that's something that will be important in the future. But these different companies I'll be talking about are actually creating uh, really good solutions for improving the world and the way we live our lives with data science. So the first I want to talk about data science social good. That's a group tied the university and they have a, a fellowship this summer. And what they're doing there is they're uh, training data scientists or maybe as front data scientists on data mining, machine learning, big data, and all this different stuff in projects with social impact. And they're working closely with governments, nonprofits. And they're solving a lot of different problems in health, energy, economic development, and different stuff. The, um, that, that, that fellowship is held in, on maybe, uh, is, is held in, in Chicago. Uh, I think for this year it's closed, but they have that all, all of the years. So you should go there and check it, check it out. If, if, you, if you write this in, uh, on Google, you, you'll find it really fast. So some of the problems they're solving with data science right now, and they're open projects for you to work there. If, if, if you go there, or maybe just contact someone there, is um, they're working with, um, with, with Netherlands government, trying to improve incident response. 
and they're actually doing and some predicted enforcement of pollution you know, for for waste violations in, in in New York, predicting the risk of long-term employment. There, uh, in Mexico, they have four projects right now. That this is the, these are the one I the ones I found on the internet. They're enhancing the distribution of services, re reducing maternal mortality, improving government response on citizen requests online, uh, improving long-term financial soundness by defining causes of home abandonment in Mexico. Um, they're in predicting, uh, they creating analytics to prevent uh, lead poisoning in, in, in children lead, and in define new, new opportunities for the food bank don donation. And all of these projects that you're seeing here, they, 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 I mean, they were created on this fellowship in the summers. So they're really interesting. You can go there. And if you go to the project section in the web page, you can see and read more ab about them. Our company I found that was doing something really important was Base Impact. And their, their, maybe their, their lemma is uh, build the social services of the future. And what they say here is that they, they think and, they, and their belief is that new technologies can do more than just generate profit. And I, I really agree with that. I think it's not, there, there's nothing bad on getting profit of what you, on, on doing what you love. And you need to do that to be able to survive and have a good life. But there can be more stuff that you can do with these things you know right now. And they, they have some projects there. Uh, one of them I found really interesting was producing hospital readmissions with data science. They're trying to find um, uh, people who's gonna uh, have a high probability of getting back to the hospital. And that's a really big problem in the United States right now. You can read more about WebH. They're helping millions out there breaking out of unemployment. They're working that uh, uh, with, with France right now. They're also restoring trust in, pol in, in police through data through data and for this uh oh by the way i will i will be um this this is lives will be available for you for free and i will create a post uh, a a post after the webinar with with the slides so you can click here in, on the github because all of their projects are open source and they have a demo here too Okay, one of the other uh, big companies I found there that are doing for, as, uh, uh, as they say, products built for a purpose is Palantir. And they have uh, two products right now. One is called Gotham, called Country. And they're, they're more uh, specialized on, on making people uh, understand their data and integrating, managing their, their, their data, amplifying the power of, of, of the data. And when you have the time, just click here on the YouTube video I, 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 I put there because they're, they're talking, they were the government of the United States when the Sandy uh, hurricane came and how they and, and how people use Gotham to, to improve the way that people trying to help like 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 uh, people trying to help people with problems with the hurricane um, use the platform. Um, so when I thought about all of these the, uh, big uh, uh, stories of, of success of companies trying to change the world, I found myself in a point where I thought, how can I be able to to change the world or maybe improve it in in, in some way? And it's not easy because you think there's a lot of problems out there. There's a lot of things that you think I, I cannot solve this because this is bigger than me and this, or this problem is really hard to solve. And I found two things that I, I, I wanted to share with you. And one of them is a quote by Aldous Huxley. He's a, he was a writer in the, in the United States. And he says there, I wanted to change the world but I have found that the only thing one can be sure of changing is oneself. And this kind of uh, quotation and quotation quote, sorry. And this, this kind of quote, uh, quote just is, is really close to something that you should be thinking. And this is this, this thought here we have that 
when you're trying to change the world, you feel you, you should be starting by changing yourself. Improving yourself can make an impact on your family in France. And then your family and friends can make an impact on the, t- on the town you live. And then that impact will be, I don't know, maybe spread through the state and the nation. And that could indeed change the world. So don't, don't feel overwhelmed with all of these things and trying to, to just shoot for the stars right away. Um, uh, improve yourself, uh, use the things you know to maybe create an open source project following these things I just uh, shared with you. Or maybe you have a problem in your, in your city that you think, hey, this can be solved with data science. Why, why can I just go there and solve it? And for you, it will be good too. If you're trying to look for a job in data science and you have an open source project solving a real world problem, and everyone is using that solution, I think it will be really easy for you to get a job in, 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 in data science. So by helping the world, you're helping, your, you're helping yourself too. And, and this is why, why I, I, I think we need more people interested in, in trying to do better for the world. We, we need more courses on this kind of things, not only Python, R, and machine learning and stuff. Uh, and there should be more courses and, and more specialization on how to solve real world problems we have that like uh, like our 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 hurting our lives and our family's life or our town's life with, with data science, and we need more enthusiasm for from from uh, schools, universities, and uh, big companies out there. And what you should be thinking about is we need you and you need yourself, because if you're not helping yourself to improve, and um, you're actually not helping the world to improve. So we need you as a person if you're in data science to think about all of these different problems we have in, in the world right now and how can you solve them with, with data science. And you need that for yourself because if you solve a problem that is big for, for maybe a small town, you'll be helping yourself too. <clears throat> and, and that's it. This is what I wanted to share with you guys. And I hope you guys were inspired by these different kind of, these different kind of stories we have. Um, and maybe that maybe got you inspired to do something really interesting and something that will make you happy with, with, with the things you know about right now with data science. And thank you for, for listening to me. Wait, you're, you're on mute, Randy. Oh, thanks, Fabio. That was great. Loved it. And then... Um, something that I would like to add on to Fabio's point, I totally agree on this. And again, in order to even make an impact to the world or even to just like your family, friends, like what Fabio stated before, you have to invest your time in yourself, whether that be improving yourself mentally, emotionally, physically. In the end, it's, it goes back to yourself because uh, if you can't help yourself out, then no matter what you do, you can't make an impact. And improving yourself again. Constant learning. Um, or, but. Can you hear me? Yeah, your, your audio is really shaky. Break up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you can use this time to answer Q and A questions right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I have one question here. I'm gonna post it on the chat box. So for those that are still here, we're gonna do some Q and A sessions. And for one of the questions I have is, so he has a bachelor's and master's in computer science, and he has been in the different field for four years. He's working in a data analyst position for nine months, but he wants to get into data science. Do you have any advice for him? All right. So... Uh, this is, I think, one of the questions we get the most. Uh, we get the most in, data, in on on LinkedIn in, in how to get a job in data science, and it's not easy for different things. 
but it's of course possible. If you're working right now as a data analyst, I think it's not that hard for you to get into data science. You need to be able to, to, to make sure that you have all of the skills that people is gonna maybe hope that, that, that you have on, on, on point. You should be able to do more than analysts to, than analyzing the data. You should be able to create models, to use machine learning, to use programming, to understand business problems and how to transform those problems into solutions with data science. And the, the thing here is it's not easy because uh, a lot of different companies is, is, are not clear on what data science is. I think they're getting out, uh, they're getting there because the, I mean, the, the efforts from a lot of different communities, like the, the LinkedIn one, um, is, is actually improve, uh, improving the way recruiters and companies are seeing data science right now. And I think it will be maybe easier in the near future to get a job there, but but maybe try to apply to, to different companies. Don't, don't apply to the best companies you, you, you think there are. There are a, a lot of good startups and small companies trying to find data scientists who work with them. So uh, don't, get fr don't get frustrated. There's gonna be a lot of, of rejection that, that's common in every job seek. <clears throat> but but I, I think it's really possible. And if you have your skills on point, you're, you're gonna get there. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have another question? Um, there are a few people have the same question, so I'm gonna aggregate it into one. It's an overlap, but a common question I've been receiving is, can you give us an example right. on converting a problem? Yeah, into, a, into converting problems into a question. All right, this is a great question because this is the hardest part of being a data scientist. And I'll give you an example here. So maybe let's, let's, let's say we are on a business and on, on, on a meeting with business people and you're the data scientist there. And they're saying to you, hey, Mario, so we want to improve sales for this a uh, three month period that is coming. So what, and the, the problem for the company there is they want to improve sales. They have no idea how or where uh, they can start. And this is the problem for you, all right? So the first thing you should be thinking here is, okay, so they have a problem and the problem is they want to improve sales. But the first question is, of course, the why maybe is, is kind of obvious for you. They would want to just improve uh, uh, sales to get more money, but uh, just you can go there and 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 ask, hey, but what is the standard right now for for your sales, and how's the marketing pe people trying to uh, to to solve this problem? Are there any initiatives in the company trying to do this? Um, uh, do you do you, have, do you guys have some expect expectation of uh, can be really different for for different kind of people. You can say like 10% is okay or 20% or 50%. What is improvement there? And you, you, you should go there and really ask a lot of different questions on how are they expecting to improve these things they're saying to you? Because th they are just ideas that they have and maybe they're, they're not really fit into a data science process. So your, your, your job there is to change all of these different ideas into different steps. So where, will I, and where is the data that I will use to, to have an idea of what uh, are the numbers of sales right now? And, how, and who's gonna work with me to integrate the data with all of the different need to create a model? And I'm, you want this problem to be solved. And this, all, all of these questions will be guiding you through the process of the data science pipeline to get from the data model. And, and of course, this is not easy. Every question is different and, and every problem is different. There are some questions all the time. Maybe I, uh, I, 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 I had a post on that a long time ago Maybe I'll share with you a, 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 um, again, or maybe I just I can create a blog, a, 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 
about it because I, I think it's a really crucial uh, step in, in, in science. So wait for that. Got it. And I have two more, but one question that really stood out was from All right. Juan Hua. And she said, so she's confused on how companies can use data science. And especially in this industry, since technology is changing so quick, some companies are utilizing big data, whereas smaller companies don't really need it. So her question is, um, like, what are the foundations on what she should be focusing on in regards to like analytics or anything data science? All right, so right now companies are doing different stuff with, with data. Um, and I, I think that depends on the company you're, you're working with. And, and some of them need big data, some of them don't need, don't need all of these really fancy solutions we have there. And what, should, what you should be thinking is what is the goal of the company? I mean, something that I do when I, I mean, this is what I, I am doing right now, trying to understand the business I just entered. I'm trying to understand the business. I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of meetings with people that, that are the, the decision makers. I'm trying to go there and understand the values of the business. What are they doing? Where are the objectives for this month? for this uh, semester, for this year. And the foundation of what you should be doing should be really close on what, is the com on, on what the company wants to do. Because if you're trying to solve things that are not important for the company, you're just trying to solve your problems, not the, pro not the company's problems. And so I think I think uh, you you should be uh, really aware of 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 what the company is trying to solve with with data. What 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 did they created this um, this new department? Maybe you're in there, and what was the initiative in the beginning? What happened before before you 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 get there with with, with your data science stuff, and and that's just just really understand the business this is not an easy thing to do it will take you uh, not a long time but some time uh, and you should be expanding the first uh, the, the first steps in every company for a data scientist should be understanding the business and try to do whatever it takes to understand the business got it and last question, I see this a lot, it's kind of vague, but the question is more geared towards stats and probability. So I have a few people asking me these questions and I guess they're trying to um, ask, how is stats and probability utilized in the data science? All right, so I think a lot of the different models we are creating in algorithms underneath they have a statistics and probability out there. I, I mean, a lot of machine learning algorithms are based on, on basic theory of, of analytics and basic theory of, of statistics. So, I, I mean, if you're not uh, researching in machine learning, you should not be that uh, concerned with understanding the full picture of every algorithm or, or every code uh, is out there in, in machine learning. What you should be really aware is we use a lot of statistics trying to explain when a model is correct. And this is what I do the most with statistics. I, there are a lot of different metrics for classification problems, for deep learning problems, for unsupervised learning problems, reinforcement learning, whatever you're, you're doing. We use statistics to to find that if the solution we're getting to the problem is correct and if this solution is statistically acceptable for the business and there are a lot of different metrics like accuracy and recall and and you have all of these uh, mean absolute error stuff and all of these different kind of of things took from statistics that we use all the time to measure the the goodness of, of a model. And this is what we do the most with, with, with statistics. And, and probability is important because a lot of the things we're doing are not d deterministic. 
Some of them are, stoch are stochastic and they have uh, the, the randomness of the world inside of the algorithm. And you should be aware of when you're using a stochastic and probabilistic models and where you're using the, the deterministic models, it's not the same. Um, um, and I, I, I think for, for me, it's, it's more close to, to, to the end of your problem. It, I, I, I think statistics is, is in all of the process of, of data science when cleaning the data, integrating the data and all of these different stuff, but we said the most for, for, for testing and measuring the goodness of, of a model. Got it. Um, I don't know if you have some more time to answer two more questions. Is that fine? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. Yeah. So thanks again for um, giving us your questions and thanks again for staying, staying with us. Two more questions that popped up that I think are pretty interesting. Um, one is, so this is from Mei Young and he or she said, I have a set of data with a lot of columns, a lot of rows, but how do I impute the missing data? So this is a data imputation problem. He has NANs and missing values. All right, so I think you should not be imputing missing data all the time. I think that that will depend on the problem and the, uh, and the data you have. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've worked in some projects then, then for, because that was the, the thing for me. Hey, just why not using here K nearest neighbor, uh, neighbors or maybe the median here or, or the mean. And when I, got to the to the point of of presenting this problem to the business they were saying hey but be, be careful you cannot assume here anything so there there are some 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 data and problems that you cannot impute data and you should be working with missing data all right and and uh, first be aware of that so if you can impute the data the, the missing data there are different ways you can just uh, use the most frequent value the, the most frequent value, you can use the mean, the median. You can uh, try to use a, an algorithm like KNN that will find the, the best point there for um, according to the other points out there. I mean, uh, it, it's like a interpolation, mostly out there that you have the different points. And it, it will say, um, if these columns and this data is like that, the, 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 the there's a big chance that this missing point uh, should be one or two or two or two point three or whatever. And um, bah, bah, bah. so, and if if you if you're concerned with missing data for creating models, just just uh, make sure to read the documentation for the other using, because some of them. Are, uh, do not work with, with, with missing values. And you should be cleaning them before going into, um, into doing data science, um, sorry, machine learning. Um, I, I, I had this problem before with Spark. I, I, I was trying to use different, and there was really weird errors that you get there. And the solution was, hey, this can use missing data. So just just make sure that you if you cannot impute it in any way, and make sure that you can do it in all like a parameter and and something and some some problems like this think that a lot of different problems are actually uh, they can be solved with with missing data and this can be a parameter too for for your model too. So so be aware of that. Got it. Uh, another one, pretty interesting, is... Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Fabio? I, I cannot hear you, Randy. Uh, how about now? How about now? Can uh, you Yours a little... Like, it's a little laggy. Um, the question is, can you explain the difference between business intelligence and data science? Sorry, I, I, I can't hear you now, but I did not hear All anything. All right, thanks. Oh, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. 
All right, perfect. Um, so the question was, can you explain the difference between business intelligence and data science? All right, that's, that's a good question too. Business intelligence and data science are different names to, to similar stuff, but it's not the same. And there, there's people out there trying to say that data science is just business intelligence and this, it's no difference whatsoever. But with the definition I gave of data science, I don't think a business intelligent person is doing that. If, if you think of data science of this process, I just mentioned with the scientific method out there, out there in, the creation, in the creation of hypothesis, experiment, tests, to solve this kind of different problems using algorithms to generate predictive models, I don't think that's all the time what a business intelligent person is doing. BI is more close to creating reports and to creating a different kind of metrics that can measure the, the, the way a process is being held in a company, that can measure uh, different kind of, of, of way to understand a problem. And they are, of course, important. Don't think that if you're a business intelligent person, you're, you're doomed because of, of data science, because they need, to, they need to work closely with data science. With, 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 with scientists. And this is what I did a lot in the last job I had. I mean, there, there were people out there that had maybe 10 years in the bank or 20 years in the bank. And they were BI people. And when you're just getting out there and you're trying to do, do all, all this different fancy stuff with data science, So uh, for, for me, it's a really uh, big point of, of help. This, this, business, this business intelligent people, because they, they, they help the data scientists understand the business. They help the data scientists understand uh, how a process was being, was, was, maybe was, was fixed and maybe how things are being uh, I mean, how the, the, the business, how to solve the problems you're trying to solve right now. And, and I, I think that's, that's the, the, the biggest difference should be that a BI person is not creating uh, advanced analytics solutions with machine learning and deep learning and all of these different kinds of stuff to solve problems for the business in that way. They're solving problems in a different way trying to create reports and analysis of data, but it's not the same. Got it. Uh, let's see if there's any more. Okay, last one. Um, this is kind of a real difference between I can I can I I can hear you again. Sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. So Kavita asks, is there any difference between statistical learning and machine learning? Last one. So I think that the the foundations of machine learning are statistical learning, mm. and I I I think it's uh, so it's, it's really close. And there are books that are named statistical learning that are just machine learning. So I, I think there's a really thin line here for trying to say what is machine learning, what's statistical learning. And there are some models in machine learning that are not full in statistics. They're more close to calculus and stuff. And, and just, just make sure that when, when, then when you're hearing the words statistical learning, you're using statistics and probability to solve the problems. And machine learning can be and they, they, there are models out there that are not that close to statistics or they're more close to different kind of, of, of programming abilities or theories in math. But I, I will say that the foundations of machine learning are statistical learning and you will find uh, uh, people, uh, really important people saying it's the same. I, I think it could be the same if you think all of the problems in machine learning can, can solve with all other problems that machine learning solve are solved with statistics. I think that will be a solution, but I, 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 
I now am using RM to learn about those statistics. So I, I will say that's that's the the I mean maybe the um, the 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 path just get uh, spread there. And there's something there that says Tiffany is going to answer this question live. Which one? The option. I don't know. Something is in blue in the Q and A. Oh yeah, that allows you to answer it if you want to type it no, out. No, I, I don't understand. Okay, but I'm just reading you these questions as they're coming along. And there's also one more All because right. people are answering, and I just want to take the time to answer it. Um, Pradeep asks, "Should we need to learn basic programming?" So I think you should emphasize like how crucial it is to understand, I guess, data structures, programming in general and the benefits it is for data science. Yeah, so I think a lot of people, and I've seen people trying to go from Excel to Spark. And that's not the way to do data science because we really, I mean, we, we don't, we, we're not expected to be developers or the best in Python or R, but you should learn the basics of programming, data structures, as Randy said, and, 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 how to use all of these different uh, tools that a programming language is giving you to solve a problem in, in data science. I've seen a lot of, uh, of people trying to just uh, throw code um, to solve a, a problem and they always get stuck. And that's because they don't fully understand what they're doing. Why maybe this is better to use a function here than just a structure. Why is better here to not to vectorize the code and not use a for loop. Um, why should I be creating a class and, and all of this weird stuff like attributes and objects? Why why is that helpful for data science? And you you should I mean and this is why I always say you should learn to program and then start to program with data science because it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And and of course uh, I, it's really easy to use pandas and Spark and scikit-learn and tensorflow because they we have all of these different kind of examples but when you are solving your your real world problem is not the same and i can stress how how different it is to uh, to replicate a problem in a blog post than actually solving a real problem in your company it's really different mm -hmm. and you should be understanding that that the main difference here is that you're going to use a lot of different kinds of, of programming structures and and different kind of theories in in in, in computing to, to solve this problem so you should be uh, learning programming basic programming in the language you prefer maybe just uh, maybe stick with the languages in data science like python r scala java don't don't learn COBOL and <laughs> and Fortran because they're they're not gonna be really useful for for your job, but but just is maybe stick with Python and R for right now. Yeah. Uh, a programming book, I I think programming book is okay. I I haven't. I mean, when I was studying computer science, and I I read books on 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 programming, but right now I think. It's easier to, to get there and do a an online course and just try with your examples and download maybe data from Kaggle and try your own stuff and maybe solve a problem. Go to Hacker Rank and solve and solve different kind of challenges and 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 have a and have a programming body. I think <laughs> that's very important. That helps. And someone that is interested. In programming this week we're going to learn about loops or this week we're going to learn about functions and this is the good thing that i find that i found in in MOOCs because MOOCs they have forums and you know a lot of people that are in the are in the same level as you are learning and maybe you can create the study groups and uh, groups and, and and stuff and and i i think this is it's easier to learn than just alone. This is, this is my my suggestion. It will be better than a book and, and practice a lot. Mm -hmm. 
best practices for programming. Uh, um, I think you okay? should, uh, um, if yeah. you're in Python, uh, read about PEP8. And John uh, asked, my question is on best practices on, in, in programming. I think if you want to, and I, I think that's something really important. And if mm -hmm. you really want to be a good data scientist in a software company, you should be aware of the, of the software engineering process. Be aware of what is testing, what, uh, what, what, why people is software tested. Um, make sure you pass to read more about the eight and, and why you should be using the, the, the success by writing your code that's a really important uh, I think suggestion and the code can you hear me hey all right oh yeah so I also want to add to what Fabio said yeah I yeah. can hear you yeah I got it um, also, too, um, for those that are really new to the field, including myself, um, one approach that I find very useful and I've heard from other people as well is data science is a hands-on approach. So no matter how much theory and how much books you read, the only real way you're going to learn is by actually coding it and seeing the results. So one way to do this that I recommend is actually go to Kaggle and then look at the notebooks that they provide because people are there focusing step by step what code they use to implement their visualizations and then like the machine learning models. So it's a really quick way to actually like understand what problem they're trying to solve, understand how they did it. And then you could probably yeah. get some of that resources and as your own, because those are some really, really helpful stuff. Yeah, that's, that, that's really true. Mm -hmm. But I think that's it. We've been here for almost an hour. Thanks so much, everybody, for attending. Do you have any last say? Anything you want to say last, Fabio? So I think what I can say is um, my my final goal right now in life is trying to make this world a, a, a better place. And I will be doing that if I maybe right now I'm. I, I did a scientist, maybe in the future I'll be back to physics or whatever. And I'll, I'll, I will be always trying to do this. And there are, uh, and there are always ways to improve your family, yourself, your country, your town, and the world with the things you're doing. Try, try to use your, the, the things you learn. Try to use your expertise in solving problems that are good for the world. Yeah. And of course, it's not this, it's nothing bad on getting profit on that, but <laughs> but the think that that we are here for a short period of time, and this this not this not there's nothing else. So you should be working a lot to to make this world a better place right now because there's no there's there's no going back to time and and doing it again. Yeah, definitely. And also I'd like to add to, um, oh yeah. So back to like the data science stuff, doing all these coursework and projects, you can do all these projects and I can't stress this enough. It's not for yourself. You're doing these projects for a reason and always have that picture on why you're doing your work. It could be for yourself, but in, the most important and the reality is you're actually doing this for somebody else, not for yourself. And this is back to always providing feedback. So whenever you're doing a project or you learn something, share your results with the community because you don't even know. Maybe somebody out there that's really lost and they read one of your posts, they're gonna get so much value from your, from your post. So that's why I emphasize using LinkedIn as not only a networking tool or like a sharing tool, but use it as a way to connect and build relationships with somebody else, which I highly value the platform platform for. And that's just my saying, uh, we host these webinars bi-monthly. So we're gonna have another one in two months. And if you guys have any suggested speakers, please let me know. 
Oh. So I think that's a really good suggestion. Join the oh, share yes. and there's a really good community out there. Yep. From each other. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm <laughs> I'm breaking up a little bit, so I apologize for my connection. And again, thanks so much for being here. Um, we're gonna have another one in two weeks. I'm looking for speakers. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. All right, thank you guys.